Say, look, women only ask that dumbass question because they basically trying to test the waters, bro. Look, let me see how many dumbass little dudes out there that's okay with this because those are going to be my new marks right there. That's all it is. If you let this type of shit happen, use a flunky. You ain't got no common sense because there's no way, there's no reason for no woman that you are courting, that you are dating, gave a commitment to, to be dancing on a nigga like that, bro. What's the worst date you've ever been on? And this guy had been trying to talk to me for a while. Mind you, he was like 30, like 29 and 30. He's like, oh, well, I really want to take you to this haunted corn maze. So we get into the corn maze, and he's like, you know, it would be so funny right now. I'm like, what? He's like, if I just left you. I'm like, huh? This man took off in a full sprint. <laughs> My... <laughs> so I'm running behind him. I lose him. <laughs> and then he pops out out of nowhere. He's like, oh, I got you. Like, it's like cracking. <laughs> So why the fuck we're walking again probably another six or seven minutes. He breaks off into a full sprint again. <laughs> I'm not chasing after him this time. I just start crying. One of the crew members, he comes out and he like is rubbing my back, whatever. He's like, well, I'm gonna just walk you to the end of the maze. <laughs> Cause he's he seen him <laughs> See, this is when you lack discernment because man, I'm not going nowhere with nobody I just met because I'm assuming she really don't even know the dude like that. She said he's been trying to get at her or whatever, but she don't know this nigga like that. And he invites you to a haunted corn maze what that don't even sound like something you're supposed to be doing and the outcome that i heard didn't match the one in my mind because it could have been a lot worse could have been reading about you on the on the news and shit like that but the newspaper man look girl slain in a goddamn cornfield like that's what my mind went off the rip i would never my daughter tell me saying my daughter says she about to go on a date with somebody to nah baby listen mm -mm. tell that nigga to take you somewhere else nope not gonna happen all they want to do is leave your little tutu wet and hurt your feelings. That's all they going to do. You're not missing nothing. You can wait. You ain't got to get no boyfriend in college, okay? You can wait four years and be single because all he going to do is leave your little cut wet. And he ain't going to do nothing but break your heart, okay? But, but. but nothing. You don't need it. You don't need him. Listen, I'm telling you. Look at me. Look at me. Look how I turned out. You want to be like me? No. Okay. Stay away from them niggas. Okay? Wait, 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 I... I'm not babysitting. I'm telling you right now. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But hypothetically... Hypothetically, my ass. No. Okay. Okay, nothing. You go ahead and go out there to LSU and get, I, 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 get with some little... I, 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 Hood, uh, hoop, nanny, no, nothing. no, 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 never, 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 I promise, That's I promise, sex song. Song I love you, I love you, wet, cook, cook, broken heart, <laughs> that's all they do, by DeAndre, fuck up your life, by DeAndre, and in therapy, crying and shit, and then they mamas ain't shit either, mamas ain't shit, they go along with all that shit them boys be doing, do you hear me, don't trust them, wet, cause that's what I'ma do I, with Trey, but, Wet Cook Cut by DeAndra. Wet. Broken. Wet. Broken. Wet. Broken. And this, this don't even last long. You be there like 30 seconds. Ruin your life. <laughs> Now look, I'm going to keep it real with y'all, bro. Behind 9 out of 10 bitter baby mamas who got to do it all by themselves, who complaining every day about a deadbeat baby daddy, is a mother like this. A mother who told them that that was going to happen. But a lot of times they be thinking that they know more than they mama. I'm young, I'm fresh, I'm hot, I'm living life. You old and washed up, you don't know what it is. It was different back then when you was a little girl. When you was my age, times is different. And they fall for it every single time, bro. Her mama told her the same thing. And look what she ended up. And right now, you're just witnessing her trying to prevent this. But one thing that I do disagree with the mom is this. I feel like in college, if women were actually taking this type of shit serious, they would go after a guy who is promising, who has great character, who has a work ethic, who shows sign of stability and wants to be a part of a relationship. The problem is they going after them niggas that be licking their tongues out, the cute dogs and all that shit, the freaking parties. Them the niggas they be wanting in college and them niggas just trying to get their dick wet at that time. I know, I know a lot of great cues and shit like that. Like my cousin, he's a doctor now. He's a cue. He's married. He's doing his thing, right? I love that little nigga to death, right? He's a chief resident over there at Duke Emergency Medicine. 
That's my little cousin. So proud of him. But back in college, he might not have been the nigga I just described. <laughs> For real, that's all I'm gonna say. But they are guys, there are guys in college who are that at college. They don't have to develop into that. I don't know why I feel the need to let y'all into this business, but honestly, I just, I felt like it was too tasty, okay? So this morning, we had a long night, last night. And so we woke up late. Well, my man woke up late to drop our son off at school. So he gets up, he rushes, you know what I'm saying? Throws on some clothes, whatever, gets my son ready, gets in the car, rushes to the school. Of course, when they get there, they late. So he can't drop them off at the curb with the car riders. He has to go into the school and, and check our son in. So he goes into the school. He says hello to the lady. The lady kind of gives him a look like, hello, good morning. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, okay, whatever. He says goodbye to our son. He drops him off. He tells the lady, have a nice day. He goes to get back in the car. He gets back in the car. He looks in the rearview mirror. And all his chin hairs are stuck together. All his chairs just stuck together. <laughs> Where my grown folk at? Oh yeah, they was getting their freak on early in the morning and daddy ain't wash his face, man. He had the little, you know, the Virginia juices and berries in his bed, man. That's crazy. I don't know if I want my wife to bring that to the internet, dude. I'm just, I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> God bless y'all. Hope y'all work out. Life learn lesson. Boy, you can go on there with that motherfucker like that. Boy, I come right in behind you. Little old tree stone. <clears throat> she loved me to death. Cooking <laughs> breakfast, lunch, dinner, all that shit. Midnight snack, everything. Doing that deal. You, you understand me? Short and hard. And I'm a fucker hard and fast. Oh. When I do like turn. <clears throat> all fucking not. <laughs> Say, bro, I really love my Mississippi kinfolk, boy. They gonna tell it like it is, goddammit. That nigga said, oh, fucking night. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed that one as much as I did, bro. Because he ain't lying, dog. Listen, real talk. You know how to use your shit, bro. You can have a gone for cones in the head, bro. Like, man, why she running behind this nigga? Man, because that nigga was digging. <laughs> I could date even more freely now because I have it set up to where my son can talk to his father whenever he pleases. I've dated someone and he would be in the living room talking to his dad. That has nothing to do with what we're doing in this household. If I cook dinner and dinner's ready for my man, for his kids, for my son, tell your dad you'll call him later. His dad don't disrespect that. And if it comes down to your example, oh, what if you had a trip and da 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 da. Once again, I'm with a man that includes my son. My son is his son, just like his kids, if he had any, would be my children. Let me ask you this. So you telling me y'all are co-parenting through a kid and you don't see nothing wrong with it's that? You guys communicate through the kid. Don't you think that's unfair to the kid to have to relay messages he does, from mom literally and dad? You don't think that's going to affect the kid in the long run? Healthy <laughs> co-parenting shouldn't like, and this is, I just hate this for a lot of people. I came from a toxic co-parenting family. So like what I didn't like was that they couldn't communicate, right? They couldn't just simply... Just tell him about my events at school. Or just tell her that you're trying to do this and like to not just put it all out there. Because if that's the only time you could get him, then let's set that up. We're organized to where I don't got to text you every day and say, hey, you getting him next weekend? We talking too much. We are not that no more. I don't owe you that no more. When I see you, it's like, hey, how you doing? Okay. How you Is it safe to say at some point of time, you're going to have to communicate with another man? But that's what I said earlier. I said this. I said, it's as simple as, you're picking him up Friday at what time so I can have his stuff ready. You could cordially talk to somebody about that. This is the but, point you're missing. What is the point? A man gets her with no kids. He doesn't have to deal with that at all. Now listen, this is what a lot of people consider listening to respond and not listening to understand. Because here's the thing. I really agree with Shorty on this one, right? I think he was just really trying to find something to argue against because that's the point of the show. But realistically speaking, if my brother had this same situation, he'd be a happy man. If he never had to speak to his baby mama ever again and he just had unlimited access to his kids, he would be a he'd be living a perfect dream, right? And many of you would be too. Some of y'all hate the day y'all fucking met y'all baby mama. And she wants to have to talk to you. She wants to be the middleman between you and your children. You would love this arrangement, this setup. So for him to say what he just said, I don't really think he was really picking up what she was putting down, bro. I understand what she was saying. No talking about. Don't invite me to no girls night if you're not kissing bitches when you drunk. 
y'all always want to have these lingerie parties and these girls nights and y'all walking around half naked or naked and my gay ass knowing i'm gay i gotta watch y'all shake y'all ass in a thong and i'm supposed to sit there drunk and horny count me out if you're not gay and you at least kiss bitches when you're drunk okay we might we might get talk about something but other than that i'm straight like i am good because what what are we doing here now i know what y'all thinking oh my god all you think about is sex y'all don't now if my friends invite me to a girls night cool you know if it's just us i'm coming if y'all inviting y'all other friends make sure they eating a little pussy or something not even a lot of pussy just make sure they eating a little pussy fellas i've been telling dudes this for years bro some of y'all dating women who are lesbians and y'all don't even know they lesbians bro real talk because look she was expecting that to go down at the party but it don't go down but that's what she's used to at these parties and listen i know women bro they didn't told me to scoop bro they be getting a freak on at a lot of these parties i'm not gonna say all of them but bro it goes down at those pajama parties those lingerie parties man yeah your girl bro she over there she got her liquor license could we just bow our heads and have a moment of silence for every man who tried to turn a hoe into a housewife? Let's just do that for a second. Hey Amen. You in a whole relationship writing a letter to an inmate. Okay, he's somebody that I've been knowing since I even met you, so I'm supposed to just cut him off because I'm dating you now? Yeah, why can't Man, you let go of your playing. past? Stop playing. Like, I can continue to talk to him. He cool. Like, what is he gonna do? He is in jail. What is he gonna it do? It doesn't matter. Like, you in a whole relationship. Okay, I'm in a situation ship. I'm giving you an ultimatum. What it's is either it? me or him. First, you can't give me that ultimatum. First of all, if anything, I'm gonna choose him because you already do the things he don't do, and that's pay bills. Oh my god. So at this point, like, I don't even know why you're trying to confront me about this because I'm going to keep talking to him. Is this love after lockup? This is not no love after nothing. Like, at the end of the day, I'm going to do what I want to do. That's like, crazy. I don't even understand why you're trying to you confront me. You do not respect your relationship. Okay, here we go. I'm not going to do this. Oh my god. Right. It's probably skip, but I'm going to keep it real with y'all, dog. I know a dude this happened to, man, and this man really wanted to crash out behind it, bro. Not gonna hold you, dog. So guess what, man? If your girl used to date them street dudes and some of them in jail, bro, it's a chance that she collect, uh, receiving collect calls from them boys and them video conference calls that they be doing nowadays in jail. And oftentimes, most of them dudes in jail got phones, man. So they DMing each other. They even FaceTiming, bro. Like all of that goes on in jail. Now, jail is different. It ain't the same jail from the 90s, bro. These dudes are still connected to the outside world. Dudes in jail back in the day used to come out and feel like they got in a time machine. Now it's just like, yo, I still know what's up because they are connected to the world still bro so guess what they might still be connected to your girl my own my homeboy is saying that we fell off because i let a girl get in between our friendship let me tell y'all what happened we went to our arcade it was him me and my girlfriend my home my girlfriend was supposed to bring her home girl for my homeboy turns out something came up and my the home girl couldn't come so for some reason i had to bring him so boom we go to the arcade mind you i'm the ride to the arcade keep that in mind so we go to the arcade, my homeboy, he's never been funny, he's never been a comedian, but all of a sudden, this particular day, he wants to be funny now. He wants to be a comedian, but it's cool though. So they, he starts making jokes, and it's okay. He starts making jokes, actually it's not okay. He starts making jokes, and it gets worse. She starts laughing at the jokes. Mind you, he keeps on making jokes, she keeps on laughing. Then she starts making one of these. He stop, stop hitting him, hitting him. And I'm just there side-eyeing, I'm like, wow, these, these, mo these, these guys, is, these niggas is really for real with this shit. So mind you, they doing this shit right in front of me, bro. And I'm the ride. Boom. They keep on doing this. It came to a point where I couldn't take it no more. I thought they going to stop. I couldn't take it no more. So what did I do? I left them both at the arcade. I don't know how they got to the crib, but I left them home. You can call me whatever you want to call me. I'm not putting up with none of that. Never. So boom, so my homeboy's talking about some, I'm weird. He t trying to pose, talking about some, I let, no, bro. No, you was never a comedian before you not a comedian now. Stop that. Like, you not funny, bro. Good job, my boy. You just quarterback the coochie to your homeboy. Both of them trifling for one because, man, I'm not finna be kikiing and doing all that with my partner or lady or whatever the girl is because, dog, I'm a funny dude in real life. I laugh a draws off. I'm not gonna hold you. I really would. I'm a funny guy in real life. <laughs> and that's that was my claim to fame with the women. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all, dog. But, man, I would have never done that. What's the best way to pick up a Bay Area chick? <laughs> oh, anything I love, man. You feel me? Get you a little Seagan Gym, a little Bacardi, you feel me? You mix that up, man. You know what that's called? That's called a, you feel me, a high speed, you know what I'm talking about? But on a real, though, real life, true story, though, how you get one of them things, though? 
you just gotta, you know, you just gotta pull up and be yourself, don't they? Everything like, oh, woo! like, all right, like, check it out. Like, hey, little mama, come here, let me highlight you right quick, you feel me? And then when they, you know, step up on you, you feel me? You pop your peas a little more, though, like, like you feel me? <laughs> Look down, not around, especially when that weak ass nigga around, you feel me? So they gonna fuck with it 100%, though, no matter what you say, though, as long as you come with the right ism, they gonna respect it or anything else. You think so? Oh! Oh, my mama. Oh, hey, hold on. But yeah, that's, that's how you damn near do your, your big one, though. Everything I love, though. Like, as long as you spitting your peas and, and kicking the right now, that she gonna fuck with it 100%, though. Oh, anything I love. Yeah. Real life, true story. Big father. Look, brother said a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. Listen, I'm gonna tell y'all what DJ told me. Now, DJ is one of the white guys I told you from a story probably a while ago. But anyway, smoothest white dude I ever met in my life. He said, say, well, look, check this out. Let's say you're walking in the mall, you see a girl. Smile at her. If she give you a real smile back, like real cheesy, go with your move, bro. Because here's the thing. She probably finds you attractive. And what you're gonna find is this. You do that enough, you're gonna realize that your percentage is way higher than people who just go talk to random females. <laughs> it is that simple. So, bam, you go to her. Look, I'm that boy Will. Nice to meet you. Keep it short and sweet. Let her know what your intentions are straight up. I want the number. Because the longer you bullshit around, then you start to put vibes off like you scared, like you not confident. Nah, man, be assertive, man. They like men. Go in there and go after what you want. Act like you got normal doses of testosterone running through your blood. You know what I'm saying? And then just tell her, man, let me get the number. First thing she gonna say is nah. And move on about your day. Tell me why I'm at the gym today and homegirl approaches me and she starts hitting on me. She looks really young in the face. I'm like, how old are you? She's like, I'm 16. Oh no! What? what? I'm like, sweetie, I'm 25. I need you to leave. She's like, no, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. My ex was the same age as you. Jail time. And we were in a relationship for two years. So you know I can keep a secret. All right, sweetie, I'm gonna give you this phone number. His name is Chris Hansen. The next time your ex reaches out, I need you to call this number. Chris is gonna walk you through it.